first, I want to thank everybody who has subscribed. We have hit 100 subscribers, so thank y'all so much. Now, today we're going to get into candy in the game. Y'all, I think this is going to be a little hit. Y'all know I've been waiting for Aunt Bertha to be on my TV screen. She can't do nothing wrong. And, baby, I'm about to be like Aunt Bertha. Everybody ain't worth a damn, okay, including candy and Todd, okay? I like the show. It's cool. I can see it going places. Um, but if y'all want a kiki, child, go on bravo.com. Baby, read these autobiographies or these little snippets, um, right? Of the little people that's on the show. So y'all know I don't be remembering names, but I promise I'm gonna I'm remember these. So of course y'all know we have Candy and Ty. We have the OLG, which is Mama Joyce, Aunt Nora, and Aunt Bertha, okay? But then we meet some new people. So we have, um, oh, and Don Wine. Y'all know Don Wine gonna be in anything that Candy do, baby. Whatever she do, she gonna make sure Don Juan get a check, baby, because Don Juan is helping her run the million businesses she got. Now, ain't a little million, but baby, Candy, Candy got every kind of business, child. She might, she, baby, she gonna have a warehouse in a minute where you can go eat, go to the dungeon, um, and buy your toys, sit down and do a little podcast, a little speak on it, and everything else, okay? So then we have Philip. Philip was kind of cute. Philip, Philip was kind of cute. He coming in to be the operations manager. He was the operations manager over there at Blaze. And he was doing so good um, that they're bringing him over to OLG to get it together. Because truth be told, baby, it needs to be got all the way together. Okay? And we're going to talk about it. Um, I was on Busy Blue. Shout out to Busy Blue. Him and So Debonair um, did a live. And so he, they found actually found Philip's LinkedIn child. And, um, baby, he used to work for the Hilton restaurants and all of that. So, you know, this is apparently what he do. And he don't have time to play these games, okay? Then we got Shondrika. Shondrika, Lord, I don't know. I, it's, it's early to judge somebody. But, baby, I'm sending her to the unemployment line for Candy and Ty. She need to go. That attitude suck. You know what I'm saying? But... On her little Bravo thing, it say that, you know, she have uh, some Airbnbs and I think she's selling some shades or something like that. I don't know. Then you have Dom Unique. She's the bartender. She was original. Her and Shondrika, they've been original bartenders. But Dom Unique also dances. So she said to us, you know, she done danced for Megan and the, Megan the Stallion and a few other people. And she also uh, was a dancer at the dungeon for the dungeon so baby candy recycle these employees i'm about to move to atlanta so i'm going ahead on give me a little piece of check they can let me be the hostess with the mostest all right let me get a little bravo check on season two and then move me on to something else candy you know what i'm saying because she baby she recycles her employees um but Dominique like that whenever she ready to go out and do her dance and go on tour, whatever she's doing, right as far as her dance is concerned, because that seems to be her true passion. Um, although the people on Google say she make good drinks, okay? Um, they let her come back to work. All right, then we have um, Torin, Tyron. Yeah, y'all, let me look. Let me look at my little notes. Um, Torin. So we have Tori. He used to work for OLG, and the people seemed to like it. The employees like it when he was there. Um, and he had their little Friday night special going on. He had the place jumping or whatever. Um, and he left. It became too much. He had his own business where he does um, event decorating and, you know, little interior design. And I ain't mad at him for doing his own. Then we have Brandon Black, who's the current GM who kind of just stepped in the road because everybody keep leaving as far as the managers. And our uh, child, he just getting the pay if they paying him to be the general manager because he is very lackluster and don't have no control over that staff, um, apparently, because the, the reviews is horrible, okay? Then we have Patrick Dallas. Y'all know that's Candy LaFine cousin, you know what I'm saying? We ain't seen so much of him yet, but we waiting to get into it with him not on his thing they see he married <laughs> he manages the OLG parking lot in the back of the restaurant child that, that baby I don't know who they got to write this stuff but it's it's hilarious then you have Brian who used to work at OLG and they gonna bring him back into the fold you know what I'm saying now, I like that candy going to get good people you know that was lawyers to her whatever to bring them on the show you know get them a little piece of check but baby Brian um 
He has his own business selling his egg rolls. Now, I ain't sure if he just sell egg rolls or he sell other stuff. But, baby, he sure came to the picnic, the reunion, in the OLG parking lot with his flyers for his own business, child, the ghetto. Then we have Melvin, who is also Candy's cousin. And he running the kitchen back there. I hope Melvin really can cook. Because them reviews say that y'all around there serving salty glory greens. Now, I hope that ain't true. I ain't been. When I come to Atlanta by my mama and visit her, I'm going to go on over to the OLG. But I hope y'all have lights when I come. Because, baby, I'm not paying for nothing. Uh, Philip, you just going to have to chase me down for the bill. Because I'm not paying to eat in, hot, in the heat. I'm not doing it. You better count me some drinks, and I don't even mean the water. That's all I'm going to see. And then we have Rashard, affectionately known as Shardo. And he was over there at Blaze. And he's the hostess over there. And Candy, like him, he always come dressed to the nines and giving the customers a good experience, right? Because the greeter, the hostess, right, they, they're the first person that they see, that you see. When you work in the in the restaurant, so they set the tone for the experience, or at least the beginning of the tone for the experience. So she bringing him over to the OLG to help out Sean Driller as uh <laughs> as our birthday caller, right? And baby, she needs some help because ooh, that them manners and etiquette, child. Now when she told the people go sit in their car in their air condition, y'all, I about died. Um. And baby, he was looking at her with the spirit of judgment, okay, while she was doing that job. <laughs> and I was here for it because I ain't feeling her or whatever. Now, he says he took a pay cut to come on over there to OLG. But I'm like, is it really a pay cut when you about to get a Bravo check? You know what I'm saying? Six one way, half a dozen another, I guess. So, of course, y'all know the episode opened up with Candy and Ty. And they talking about the restaurant. They talking about how it has gotten out of control, right? And they need to go on head on and bring it, ran it back in. They've had different GMs come and go in it. Barely be, but don't nobody seem to stay. I don't know if they just come and they get overwhelmed or if they all move on to go do other things um, that they want to do on their own. Because, child... Don't nobody want to work for people forever. I know I don't. All right. So then they have Philip there who was running Blaze, as I stated. And they had him, the people, thinking that he was just there to uh, spice up the menu and do some changes to the menu or whatever. When he really about to be their operations manager and he's sitting back there in judgment watching how they moving. So, you know, we see them at Candy and Ty, which is the them, talking to Philip. And Philip was like, look, y'all got issues. These people don't want to listen. They don't want to do nothing. And they're disrespectful. And some of them is your family. I was like, oh. Now, y'all know Candy don't like for nobody to talk about her family. But they need to be talked about. Some of them need some unemployment slips. I'm just saying. Like, it's cool to want to employ your family. But when your family bringing your business down and taking money out your pocket, I'm not going to continue to put money in your pocket when you taking money out of mine. Because this restaurant going to eventually end up closing. With all of this bad service, baby, because the reviews, oh, child. Y'all want a good kiki, go read them reviews after y'all read <laughs> them little autobiographies. I don't know who Bravo got to do that, baby, but they should have went to Grammarly and figured out how to structure that. No tea, no shade, but that's just what it is. Y'all, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and of course, share the video, right? So he's telling them that. So, you know, Don Wine is there. Like I said, y'all know Candy gonna bring Don Wine everywhere, baby. Don Wine, you need an assistant, baby. All oh, them businesses, Candy got you running for that enterprise round there. You need about three, four assistants. But anyway, so Don Wine is like, yeah, you know, we need to get it together. So they're gonna go and have a staff meeting on um, Candy and Todd. We wanna talk about y'all. And I love you, Candy. I swear I do. I love you, girl. I love you and Ty together. Y'all have beautiful family. Make some beautiful babies, okay? But um, I'm going to need y'all, if y'all want y'all staff to be more professional, I'm going to need y'all to be more professional, okay? The staff meeting should not be held so close to opening time where the people is still standing outside. The corporate and stuff um, being changed, baby, get y'all an overnight crew. Y'all can afford it. Get y'all an overnight crew to come do that. That way y'all not putting the restaurant right back together right before the people come in and y'all end up opening 20, 30 minutes late. That ain't that ain't good for business. That's not cute. People are already standing in line forever. And baby, two, three hours? Mm-mm. 
No, no, I need to go there on a Tuesday or something. Cause I ain't gonna stand in line that long for no food now that I'm hungry. Oh no, oh no. That ain't gonna happen. Cause when my stomach say feed me, baby, it needs to be fed, okay? Um, and that's just that. You know what I'm saying? But I heard y'all stuffed eggs is good around there. I did hear that that was good, okay? So anyway, they're going to have the staff meeting or whatever. And they announced that Philip is now going to be the new general manager of operations or the new operational manager or whatever, right? Baby Shondrick. Oh, I don't like him. First of all, ain't nobody asked you what you like. Ain't nobody asked you what you like. And baby, what happens to, you know what I'm saying, to your good co-worker that you're fooled with because her and Dominique is real good girlfriends or whatever, right, from what it seemed like. Baby, what happened to on our break in a call when you send that secret text message? I mean, you know, if you want to keep your job, but that right there, let me know you too comfortable and can't inside y'all let her be too comfortable. Because ain't nobody asked you for your opinion. It wasn't opinion hour. But so you see, Chandrilla, I already see you. Or Chandrilla, as um, Aunt Bertha called you. And that's probably what I'm going to be calling you because Aunt Bertha called you today. And I love Aunt Bertha, all right? Um, you have the mindset, like, since you've been here since day one, you a day one hostess, dude. You know what I'm saying? And ain't nothing wrong with people who host this. But you're not the manager. But you have that um, mentality like that's your restaurant. But clearly, if you was doing a good enough job, them people wouldn't be talking about you on them Yelp reviews. And Candy and Time Out would have offered you the position instead of keep giving it to this person, that person, the other person. Clearly, you ain't management material, so I'm going to need you to stay in the work lane. It's just that simple. You know what I'm saying? So after they do that, we see them getting the restaurant together. Don Juan go ahead on, pull over to the side, come on, step in the corner. They go downstairs in a little roundabout area. And he asking her, what's the matter? And she's like, I don't know. I don't like him. I just don't like him. And Don Juan like, but you don't even know him. You know what I'm saying? But she like, he came in trying to do too much. You're going to listen to me, this, that, and the third. Listen, at the end of the day, that's a supervisor. If you don't want to be supervised, put yourself in a position to become the supervisor. But if you don't know how to be a worker, you can't be nobody's supervisor. You know what I'm saying? People wanted to say that Philip was handling her wrong. And I'm like, nah, Philip handled her right. Because if it was me, baby, listen. My first act of business would have been to give her the directions to the unemployment line. Point blank, period. Because she got a nasty attitude. That's it. That's all. Ain't nothing more to it. She don't feel like she can be told nothing. She feel like that's her restaurant. She been there. She the OG. She been there. All of this time, can't nobody tell her nothing to do. She have that attitude like, oh, I've been here longer than you, so you can't tell me nothing. But um, clearly, he has more experience than you. Because as loyal as Candy is to people who stick by her, she would have gave you the opportunity. Did she see fit? And truth be told, in the confessional, she said the only reason you still there is because you've been there since day one. But Candy, listen, I understand you want to be loyal to people. But understand, when you're getting bad reviews on your restaurant because of this person and she your hostess, the very first person that people see when they walk into your place of business or establishment, man, listen, I don't care how long, man, hell no. You want to keep or find something else for to do. Let her answer the phone round down there around to the candy factory or something. Good morning. Thank you for calling the candy factory. That's all she needs to say and pass on the dime wine and whoever else working up in there. If you want to keep her employed. But like I said, it says she got Airbnbs and stuff, so I don't, you know, and she got her own little business, so I don't understand why she ran into the candy factory anyway, to the OLG. But anyway, so she like, she don't like him, this, that, and the other. He said, the problem is you think we're going to go back and forth. I'm not going to go back and forth. Now, Philip is a little arrogant child. He wear his um, experience on his sleeve, and he's going to let you know that, um, nah, I'm not about to do it. I don't argue with hourly employees. I said, ooh. Not the hourly employee. Now, wait a minute, Philip. I mean, I feel you, but damn. Ooh, all right. He one of them, you going to do as I say, um, and that's it. Ain't no discussion about it. And I was here for it because they need to be got together. Philip couldn't come up in there and trying to be friendly because they already out of order. They already doing what the hell they want around there. You know what I'm saying? So they needed somebody who was going to come in and be stern. So he needed to come in and set his dominance and this is the way it's going to go. And then once he set that and get everything in order, then he can, you know, kind of relax and, you know, be friendly. You know what I'm saying? Don Juan, like, he, ooh, he need to 
get to know the people or whatever, but that's the problem. Too many people that came up and ain't got to know the people. And now the people don't give a damn. All right. So he like, listen, I'm not about to argue with you. I'm not going to do this. And he walked off. But see, she's talking all that big and bad. Then you want to go cry in the corner over there to John Why? Nah, if you big and bad and bold enough to sit in front of everybody talk about how you don't like this man, he doing too much, you can go back and forth with him. Don't go in the corner and cry. But maybe she was crying out of frustration because I know sometimes when I'm aggravated and I'm emotional and I'm mad, the tears will start flowing. You know what I'm saying? So maybe that's what it was with her or whatever. So then she come upstairs, child, and now she had the ball behind time, unique baby. Um, everybody else is putting tables and stuff together. You know what I'm saying? You should have been over there wiping off the menus or something this COVID, making sure everything is sanitized. Y'all got enough copies. No, you behind the ball. Round there talking to Dom Unique about what Philip said. He gonna tell me. And Philip was like, so we gonna discuss this like I'm not right here? We don't need this on the floor. You can go home for the day. Now you done lost your money. Because they was taping that day, so you lost that, you lost that time on filming. For Bravo, you know what I'm saying? I mean, unless they just pay you for the few little scenes you did right then and there. Or y'all did some more scenes after that. But baby, you lost the um OLG hostess paid that day too. Because you want me around there with an attitude. Girl, nah, that's them conversations we have at home. Like, girl, I don't know who he think he is, but I'm not the one. He, I'm not the one, the two, or the three. You don't have it on the floor when we already late to open up the business and we trying to let people get in. And truthfully told, if Philly would have just went ahead on and opened that door, you would have been around there behind the bar while the customers was walking in instead of telling them you're going to be at table one, section two, or come follow me over here to this table. You would have been over there, around there, behind that bar, talking all of that trash. And that ain't what's needed, right? So we're going to digress. Candy want to do a... Um, or OLG reunion with the OGs that used to work there and the new people that's working there. Cool. I think that's to bring some people in to get them a check and to shake things up with the staff. Try to get some of the good people they had back. Because um, the people who they have not ain't worth a damn. We see Candy go talk to the OLGs. Y'all know ain't Bertha, I Nora, and Mama Joyce. All right. So the people, the producer asked Mama Joyce if she, you know, asked them if they're a gang. And they said, no, they ain't no gang. I Nora said, no. I ain't in no game. We go to church every Sunday. Mama Joyce put up that church finger like, nah, not me. Um, I, I don't go every Sunday. <laughs> right? I, 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 I don't go every Sunday. And so that's, you know, we see them, y'all. And I'm glad them three old ladies back on my TV. But Alberta, Alberta is my hands down favorite, baby. So Candace said she gonna go talk to them because, you know, they're a little gang. And they, they get on everybody at one time, all three of them together. And I'm like, yep, them sisters gonna ride. That's what they gonna do. And so she said she wanted to talk to them, but she gonna separate them because of that same reason. You know what I'm saying? She'll get more real from them than sitting one-on-one -on -one, than with them all together. So we see her talking to Alberta, y'all. And I, she asked Alberta what she think about the employees. And Alberta say, none of them worth a damn. And I say, well, Alberta confirmed for me when I first saw her. She said, especially that girl, what's her name? Uh, Sean, Sean Driller, who used to work there. <laughs> Hey, Bertha don't see it for her either, baby. When they put that little picture up with the thing with the sharp teeth, child, I said, oh, they ain't had to do that girl like that because she a pretty girl. The people around there saying she look like Sky from Black Ink Crew. I don't know. I don't see it. But she's a pretty girl. Just nasty attitude. So, Candy was like, she still worked up. And Bertha was like, mm-hmm. Now, y'all know them old people when they give that, mm-hmm. They don't see it for you, but they trying to hold their mind, manners and mind their peace. But, you know, they ain't going to hold their peace too long. Then we see us talking to, um, I know her. I know her pretty much said the same thing that, um, Ain't Bertha said, you know what I'm saying? They ain't worth a damn. They don't care. You know what I'm saying? They don't care. And um, I know her said she got to be working with a baby. She, she'll throw them over the fence. Now, that's when I know it's bad. Because out of the three of them, I know her is usually the peaceful sister. So when I know her ready to box you and throw you over the fence, I'm trying to figure out what's going on and what the hell you doing. Because she she normally the little peaceful soul. But it seems like we're going to get... um. A little kick from Ain't Nora throughout the season from the previews of what's going to go on through the season. Mama Joyce. Mama Joyce said they don't care about the restaurant. They don't care. And Candy's like, you can't be around there getting into it with people. Mama Joyce like, I don't get it. 
into it with nobody. And I'm like, Mama Joyce, we done seen you get into it with Karma, Ty, Ty, Mama, Candy, Portia, baby, you went down there around there to Phaedra um, office and said what you said about why she, Mama Joyce, we know you, we know you will clock somebody. We know you will get on somebody's ass, but all right, Mama Joyce, we're going to give it to you. Maybe you reformed, even though you're not going to church every Sunday. Maybe you reformed and you ain't doing it no more. And then Candy tell them, stay out the kitchen. And they ain't birthday and they ain't over like, yeah, because you can fall. Which makes me feel like Mama Joyce be around there trying to get the food right. Or at least going around there controlling what's going on in that kitchen. But Mama Joyce, if you ain't got on them chef shoes that don't slip and slide, um, <clears throat> I'm going to need you to stay out the kitchen because you and your wedges don't work in the kitchen. So then we get to... The parking lot um, reunion, right? And baby Chandrika come when they show her again. She say she decided in her mind she just going to do what Philip say to do. And that's going to be it. She going to do her job and go home. That's all anybody wants you to do. Your job and go home. All of that extra. And then do your job right. Okay? But that's when we meet the rest of the people. Tour and we see him, baby, him backing up in that U-Haul was me. He like, I'm about to hit this sofa. Now, he ain't hit the sofa, child, but I probably would have hit it. Okay, but I appreciated him and his little suit with the shorts. You know what I'm saying? He was looking very cute. I was like, all right, sorry. Go ahead on and give him style, baby. Miss Chandrika pulls up, baby. They tell her, hey, Miss Fashion over. She like, hmm, because no matter where you're at in Atlanta, you got to look good. I'm like, all right, baby. Well, I hope Fashion over sending you a little check. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever, why you, you know, wearing their clothes on this show. I'm just, you know, girl, listen, call them up. See if you get your sponsorship. Because I don't think you're going to be at the OLG too long. But uh, if Philip have his way. But something about that tension with Philip and Chandrika make me feel like it'll be a late night at the Christmas party. And they'll be a little drunk. And they'll do some things, you know what I'm saying? So we see the rest of the people come up uh the guy who's selling the egg rolls and everything um and that's when we meet shardo baby he's around there candy talk to him about bringing um the old leaving blaze and coming to the olg or whatever right and so he's like yeah i'm gonna do it and i'm like of course you're gonna do it because the the cameras are at olg they are not at blaze they're at olg all right I wonder if Blaze have this kind of drama going on over there. Because we might get one season of the crew at OLG and another season of the crew at Blaze. Just thinking, um, Brian, that's his name. Baby, Brian come with his flyers. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. I said, not you passing out flyers at these people, even. But they didn't seem to be too mad about it. You know what I'm saying? So cool. They, she asked. Shardo about coming over there. He said, yeah, she introduced him to Chandrilla, a.k.a. Chandrika, right? And tell her, you know, he's going to be coming over there. She's like, yeah, I'm going to have to train him. And I'm like, nah, he look like he probably need to train her. Okay, but whatever. We going to do it like that. That's fine, whatever. Then we see them sitting down there, baby. They is drinking like they are not at the work event, which makes me feel like, can't that time y'all do this all the time? Because they is towed up, Okay. They tow up. I'm unique like I think I'm about to throw up. But she, you know, I ain't see her throw up. She probably threw up when she went home. I had one hell of a hangover. Baby, they was getting so um twisted. Till Ty was like, hey, cut the ball, cut the balls off. Close them. They too late. They too late, close them, because we don't want to be responsible for nobody when they carrying they carrying they self home. Right? We wanna make sure. And that's what that's the responsible thing to do. You know what I'm saying? So then after that, you know, uh, we see them going to the restaurant, baby Chandrika, um, in the car talking about she should have stopped for breakfast. She already running late or whatever. She don't know how to get around after four years. She still need her GPS. And baby, I've been to Atlanta. Them highways, all them people out there, all them twists and turns. You miss one street. You got to go up 20 streets so you can get back around in, in downtown. So it's very possible, girl. Get your GPS, but get up early. Get up early, baby. She fussing with the people because they blowing at her. She's like, I'm right here. But she's taking out her rollers. I'm like, girl, you should have did that before you got home. Baby pulls up to the front of the restaurant. And I'm like, shouldn't that be reserved for the people who come and eat 
at the restaurant, but baby, people probably know don't park there because she probably walk in with hell, hellfire and brimstone. They park up in her parking spot. You know what I'm saying? So that was that on that. You know what I'm saying? She's still into like, I think a minute, maybe 30 seconds before the restaurant was supposed to open, put a little purse up and was like, yeah, okay. Baby, um, Shoto was there like, I know you lying. Zawa was like, she late and then she gonna come moseying up in here. And I'm like, yeah, but y'all got mad with Philip when he wanted us in a home. She needed to go home. So baby, the line is out the block, out the door, up the block, round the corner. Um, all the way to Keisha Lens Bottom House, baby. That's how long the line is. And they telling people two, three hour wait. She's telling people go down there and get a drink. Go sit in your car with the air. I'm like, this is so ghetto. This is out of order. Like, just because we in an urban area don't mean we have to serve urbanly. You know what I'm saying? What people be saying about us, like... We ain't got to do that. Shoto was like, well, where y'all iPad? How y'all doing this? She was like, iPad, baby. <laughs> Welcome to the OLG. We ain't got all of that. Not candy and tie. If y'all going to make Blaze be so nice and I understand this is like a soul food eatery, um, get the people the best things to to work with. Why not have an iPad and organize where you can have the sections on there and see who's sitting where and make sure you know one server don't have so many people. But it was people everywhere up in there so everybody had people she was sending people downstairs wasn't no more room for the people to stand downstairs to get no drinks at the bar i'm like see they, this is this is unorganized i see why y'all got fill up here then next thing you know y'all the lights went off i said not the lights the, not the lights that candy like shoot y'all know people be saying candy around there not paying her bills but apparently this area tends to lose lights which makes me feel like um why y'all don't have no generator? Like, first of all, if y'all losing lights like that for three, four hours at a time, I mean, it's a restaurant, so I'm pretty sure y'all got them good freezers or whatever, but why would you risk? What if they go out and can't come back in, come back for like nine, ten hours? Now you got stuff throwing out, meat, th meat throwing out. Y'all got to throw all that away. But Ty, like, I ain't worried about it. You know what I'm saying? He got too much to do. It's too many permits to get. And he, he, he fine with the lights being out two, three hours. And I'm like, I'm not fine with it. Because if I come there to eat, Philip trying to stop the people. Y'all don't have no backup way to pay. Y'all don't have none of that. So if people just decide to walk out, first of all, y'all got all of them damn people up in there. If people just decide to walk out and don't want to pay, then what? Then y'all can't even take payment. Like, you not about to hold me hostage up in here because you don't have no backup system. I got somewhere to go. I done ate my meal. I'm ready to pay. If all I have is my card and you can't take it, baby, that's on you, Mo. Sorry. Not sorry. And it ain't even a dining ditch at that point. Y'all should have a backup. Hence, if you had a pad, it would still be charged. And you can do like the little square. When you go to the different places, you can have more than one. Get them little things like Chili's head where the bill can come right there on the table. Bam. Swipe it. Paying full. Y'all automatically charging people 18% gratuity for service who ain't worth a damn. That don't make sense. If you wanted to open a restaurant, do it right. Y'all losing more money. You losing money because people going to walk out. You losing money because you're going to lose product. Then Brandon, you the manager. I understand that Philip is the operations manager. So he's calling. But while he was calling, trying to figure out with the light company, What's going on, Brandon? You sitting down there wanna be in Dominique's face watching her behind. Melvin, Kelvin, Melvin, you sit y'all sitting at the table like y'all just people at the restaurant who the lights done went out on chilling. No, what happened? The staff is supposed to be scrambling. Greet people, okay. You can't sit in the kitchen. You know, we apologize. For the lights going out, we're calling to see what's going on right now. Greeting the customers. Hey, can we get you some water? We understand it's, you know, a bit warm, whatever, whatever. The situation may be, or if it's winter time, when it happened, get the people a little complimentary coffee or something. Say something to the people. Philip work, walking around that time, um, Sean Drica, like, this happened all the time. We in the hood. <laughs> this is just, just what it is. Candy comes, Mama Joyce and them now, baby. I'm birthday, like, ooh, going up and down these steps, all of this. Mama Joyce goes out to greet Candy and tell her the lights went off. And Candy, like, why the lights went off when I when I pull up? Mama Joyce, like, shoot, they've been up about 10, 15 minutes. So Candy comes in 
and she's apologizing, which I understand that because it's their restaurant. But your staff should have been telling people, I apologize. We sorry about the inconvenience. Even though it's not your fault, that's inconvenience. After these people done stood up two hours. And then we find out from Philip that the light is going to be out about three, four hours. Child, no ma'am. A generator is needed. Todd, I appreciate all the um cute little videos you post on IG. Bringing baby blades to the nursery and the daddy daycare. They real cute. But I need a video of you standing in the line um, down there to the city permit department and getting a permit to get y'all a generator because that just don't make no sense. Y'all had a generator, then y'all could keep working. People keep, make, keep making money because, baby, people was leaving and Philip was like, don't let them leave. And y'all going to put y'all employees in a dangerous situation because if they get somebody who like, listen, I don't have time to wait three, four hours for the lights to come back on to pay you. And y'all be trying to hold them people there. Baby, it's going to cause a commotion in the ocean. That's all I'm saying. But this was real cute. I liked it. I'm definitely going to be reviewing it um, every week. Because it seems like it's going to be some drama. I want to know why I Nora and the other old lady is fighting. Hey, baby, I want to find out if Mama Joyce really told them people that this was her restaurant. I believe Mama Joyce probably told these people this was her restaurant. Oh, we see Brandon and Dominique. Baby, they slick slide, for, six, six slide, flirting with each other. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, hmm. We peeping that energy. He asking her out on a date. He, we find out he came to the OLG first as a customer. And then went back and got a job so he can flirt with her. And I'm like, sir, you could have just flirted with her um, at the restaurant. You know what I'm saying? But I guess he was killing two birds with one stone. Need a job and get a girl. You know what I'm saying? Get him an old lady or whatever. And that's fine, cool and dandy, but what's going to happen when y'all get into them arguments? You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, they can keep it professional, but too many times, that stuff right there go left. When you dating a manager, you know, she might feel like she she got some privileges that don't nobody else want to have. And the minute he go to tell her something about it being a manager, it's going to be an argument like you wasn't saying all that when I was sitting on your face. Now what? Now what? Or y'all gonna get to the point where y'all really feeling each other and y'all know how it is when you first starting out with somebody y'all in that loving, loving mood, y'all trying to sneak off and get kisses and stuff on the job. Like, that ain't professional because, baby, if that was him and her in that office and she was straddling that man, that ain't for the workplace. That ain't work protocol. You know what I'm saying? Don't play where you make your money because sometimes the games end up bad. Now you out of a job and you out your, your good deed. If he got good D. I'm just saying. But y'all, this was real cute. I liked it. Um, I'm going to review it every week, like I said. Because I'm here for a birthday. I'm here for it all. Like, even though I don't like Shandrika attitude, you know, you always have to have that feisty person that's just going to bring the attitude um, in reality TV. So, while she ain't a good hostess, she might be good for reality TV. So, I'm going to see what it got, what it give, what it do. And I'm going to see y'all next Sunday. Well, actually, I'm about to come back to y'all in just a moment with that Jocelyn's Cabaret. Y'all know we got the welcome to Vegas, okay? So, thank y'all for coming, tuning in. That's it. That's all I got for Candy and her gang. That's it. That's all. See y'all next week, readers. Bye-bye.